What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Guts and Guns. My name is Kobe, and today we got first shots with the lightweight 16 inch AR upper that we built a couple of videos ago. Um, so, in case you guys haven't seen that video, I'll go ahead and make sure to put it somewhere up here in the link. I've always wanted to say that. Real quick, before we get into it, I just wanted to go over the final parts on the build. Now, in that video that we did, we only showed the upper and it had no accessories on it. It didn't have a, uh, an optic mounted to it yet. It was basically just the upper and the weight because this is a lightweight build coming in under five pounds before accessories. But to finish it off, I did include a uh, mil spec Palmetto State Armory lower. I went ahead and replaced the furniture. This is a Magpul K grip, and this is a Mission First Tactical Battle Link stock. The reason why I went with this particular furniture, guys, these for actually for those who might not be familiar, these are the lightest weight furniture on the market. Basically, that's the only reason that I chose it, just because I wanted to go with all lightweight components, uh, the lightest I could get it possible. Um, also, over here on the handguard, I went with the CAG grip from BCM, or Kinesthetic Angled Grip, and I do have some of those uh, BCM rail, rail panel covers, the MCMR rail panel covers. These things are freaking amazing. Um, I don't know if you guys have or haven't seen them before. At this point, they're probably super popular. I'm sure everybody knows about them, but uh, they're just freaking awesome. Once you've got a good grip, it's not going anywhere. And also, on this optic right here, this is a 1-6X low-powered variable optic from... It's made uh, via Vism by NC Star. NC Star is pretty popular in the uh, uh, airsoft world, and I guess they're, they're they're trying to up their game and come into the uh, the uh, weapon mounted optics game. Uh, this is a pretty good budget scope. I actually heard about it uh, via two other channels that I like to follow. Um, one being the uh, 704 Tactical. And uh, another guy called Focus Trip. I'll go ahead and include their reviews on this optic uh, down in the link for you guys. But it, the, the optic's actually pretty freaking nice. Um, I've been very surprised with it. But uh, the mount that it comes with is garbage, guys. It's 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 just it's no good. It, it really isn't. Um, I had a little bit of a difficult time zeroing it because of this mount um if you notice right here it's got these uh qd levers it is a qd mount but check this out i mean look at all the play i mean this thing has play like crazy in it um so yeah this mount has got to go um but other than that the optic was pretty great. Let me know if um, you guys would like a review on this optic. Because I know it's not very common. And there really isn't much information about it. Uh, at least not on YouTube. Other than those two particular reviewers. Uh, which is where I discovered it. Um, I really haven't seen anybody else do a uh, review on it. So, you know, let me know if you guys are in interested in... Uh, a review of this optic guys because it really is pretty decent I've been very pleasantly surprised but with that said um, let's go out to the range so you can check out the first shots with this all right guys so we got first shots with the lightweight 16 inch upper that we just built so this is my first experience ever with an adjustable gas block uh, like I mentioned in the previous build video this is from Seekins Precision. And according to the instructions, there's uh, two sets of screws here. 
uh, one on the side which actually adjusts the uh, gas that comes in or out of the block and one over here through the front which locks the adjustment in place. I already went ahead and loosened up the locking section and I went ahead and screwed the gas adjustment all the way in according to the instructions and you're gonna adjust it one two full turns all the way out then at this point we're gonna go ahead and take our first shot this is gonna be done with one round in the mag and the reason for this is to see if when that round is fired the uh, bolt carrier group comes back far enough to lock on the mag because that'll let us know if um, it's cycling properly and if the cycle's running, if the bolt carrier group, I'm sorry, is running far enough back to be able to chamber the next round on the way back in, okay? So we got Winchester white box, 55 grain, and Here's the first shot with the lightweight upper. Looks like that chamber just fine. And here we go. Uh, by the way, I am gonna be zeroing this at 50 yards. Um, and as far as the uh, NC Star LPVO, I'm not running it with any illumination now. It's 4.30 in the afternoon right now in South Texas. so. Uh, we got this beautiful sun. We got a really nice fresh breeze out here. And um, I just don't really need the illumination. I'm just running off of that glass uh, etch reticle, okay? And that locked back just fine. So what does this mean? This means that at this point, it's gassed. Uh, sufficiently that doesn't mean it's gassed properly it just means it's gassed sufficiently um, so the whole point of an adjustable gas block is to be able to use as little gas through your system as possible or as reliably necessary that way you can uh, enjoy the benefits of a lighter recoiling rifle right um, so at this point what I'm gonna do is I am going to go ahead and close it off just a half a turn to see if that will still cycle, okay? Um, but uh, due to the whole uh, flugaloo, cough apocalypse, holocaust, whatever you want to call <laughs> this whole Rona situation, um, I'm trying to be frugal with my use of ammo, okay? Um, so at the same time that I'm trying out. Uh, I'm trying to figure out this whole gas system. I'm also zeroing the rifle, and like I said, at 50 yards. Um, so let me go ahead and check up on my first shot, and then uh, we'll go ahead and continue adjusting the gas block and zeroing our rifle as well. So here we are with our target. Like I said, we're shooting at uh, we're zeroing at 50 yards. That is the area where we're shooting from. Um, so as you can see, this was my point of aim. Here's my point of impact. So obviously, as you can see, windage doesn't seem to be too far off. So we're just going to compensate for windage just a little hair. Um, elevation is quite a bit off. So um, we're, we're really, really high. So let's go back to the table. Let's make the proper adjustments. And um, I'll give you guys some little tips, tricks, and hacks for... Um, setting up your zero okay so here we are back at the bench um like i said the uh first round seemed to bring that bolt far back enough as, as much as we needed to go to so we got locked back which means either we're properly gassed or have a little bit of leeway so i'm gonna go ahead and close off that gas block half a turn I went ahead and closed it off a half a turn to see if we can still get away 
with the rifle cycling. There's our mag, one round, once again, to see if we still get that lock back. And now we're gonna go ahead and adjust for windage and elevation. Excuse me, I don't wanna muzzle Mrs. Guts and Guns who's back there manning the camera. Which by the way, thank you once again to Mrs. Guts and Guns for lending me her lower. Um, I am borrowing Mrs. Guts and Guns lower for a bit uh, while I go ahead and get mine set up properly. Okay, so for elevation, I'm gonna go ahead and bring it 20 clicks down, okay? And that should theoretically, wait, wait a minute, yeah. So if I'm shooting high, I'm gonna bring it 20 clicks down, that should, should theoretically bring us back uh, somewhere near the area we wanna be at. So I'm gonna go ahead and do one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, we should be right about there. Um, now, on windage, guys. So, the word force, right? Front sight, opposite. Rear sight, same. Right? Um, so... If we're shooting a bit left, then we want to adjust left, and theoretically that should bring us to the center of where we want to be. So, if this would be right, then I'm going to move left, and I'm going to do about five clicks on this adjustment. All right. That's that. Let's go ahead and take our shot and see if that's any better. Beautiful. I can already see from here. We're looking a lot better. And we got locked back again. Okay? So that's a good thing. Let's go ahead and check out that target, guys. All right, guys. We're back at the target. Um, so beautifully. Everything's working out beautifully. Um, like I said, force. Front side opposite. Rear side same. F O R S. Yeah, <laughs> F-O-R-S. Um, so on the front side, we we were high, so we went the opposite. We adjusted the side low. We went down 20 clicks, and look how close we are to our point of aim. Um, windage, as far as windage goes, um, it was force. Front side opposite, rear side same. So on the rear side... Um, I went ahead and adjusted to my reticle. I adjusted it to the same side where I was shooting off. So I was shooting a little bit left. I adjusted it left and sure enough, we were able to bring it in just a bit closer. So here we are, this is our progress. That's only our second shot guys. So let's go back to the bench and see if we can finally get it dialed in right where we want it. Back at the table again guys. Um, so, if you remember, we're a lot closer than we are, and we still got lockback on our bow carrier group. So, this means that we still have leeway as far as our gas system. So, once again, I the last time for our second shot, I adjusted it half a turn tighter to close it off. Another half a turn. And I'm going to go ahead and repeat the same process. I'm gonna tighten it down another half a turn to see if that gas block is still forgiving enough for us to get locked back. And as far as our adjustments, like I said, we're making gross adjustments uh, just because I don't have a zero target with me, but um, we're gonna follow the same principle we did right now uh, using force. And I'm going to go ahead and adjust. Okay, so I adjusted down the last time. I'm going to go ahead and adjust another five clicks down. And I'm going to go ahead and adjust 
one more time five clicks left okay here we are let's go ahead and start our mag release our bolt and here's our follow-up shot That looks pretty good from here. Let's go check it out, guys. We got locked back again. Sweet. Okay, so here's our third follow-up shot. I might have been a little bit conservative on the adjustments with this shot. I'm gonna go ahead and adjust it one more time, and then I'm gonna call it good. I'm gonna do three consecutive shots this time, just for confirmation. Because as well, um, you have to remember, guys, that we're human. And uh, I'm also not the greatest shooter in the world. So, like I said, this time I'm going to do three follow-up shots. And then we'll go ahead and see where we're at. And call it confirmed from there. Alright, guys. So, I went ahead and continued shooting. Like I said, I was going to do three more shots. Um, I've done two shots so far. The first, uh, I just, I pulled it really bad with the trigger. So I'm not even going to count that shot. Let's just say I have one shot so far. Um, I think I finally adjusted just a little bit too far with my windage. So I'm going to go ahead and, and bring it back. I'm going to go ahead and bring it back three clicks. Okay, um, that's that. And I also, on the last shot... I don't know if I caught it in camera, but I'll go back and, and look at it in post. Um, I finally didn't get locked back with my bolt carrier group. Um, so that means that I've reached the limitations of restricting the gas flow. Um, so according to Seekins Precision, once you've reached that limitation where you're not getting locked back anymore, you want to go ahead and bring it back to where you lock. And then from the point where you lock, you want to open it another half a turn to a full turn uh just for reliability sake so uh, i went ahead and adjusted it back one full turn i'm gonna see if i get locked back uh, and once if i do get locked back then i'll go ahead and adjust it another half a turn and then i'll call it quits with that and uh, we'll go ahead and use a little bit of blue loctite and lock in the uh adjustment using the lock screw on the uh, gas block, okay? <laughs> Beautiful. Okay, we got lock back. So, for um, reliability sake, I'm gonna go ahead and give it another half a turn. Now that we know we're locking back. And that was the gas adjustment screw. Here we are, here's our screw. Um, yeah, it looks like my wrench might be off just a hair. Um, let's go ahead and add some of that blue Loctite. Just a couple of dots. Don't need much. Like I said, we're still going to be doing testing and evaluation over time with this. Oops, I didn't move my mic. You guys probably couldn't hear me that well. Put those two dots, a blue Loctite. Um, now most people recommend red Loctite for this particular sh screw. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and go with blue for now guys, because I still got a whole bunch of testing to do. 
um, before I can call it, you know, 100% set and reliable, um, I really don't like to uh, think as one of my firearms is reliable unless I have, at the very bare minimum, a thousand rounds in it uh, without any issues. You know, and that's at a minimum. A thousand rounds uh, without any issues, I want to say, is like the bare minimum that I like to have my firearms at. You know, that I could still call it reliable. Um, okay, so we went ahead and tightened up our set screw for our gas block. Uh I'm going to go ahead and see if I can, oh yeah, that's locked up pretty tight guys, um, perfect, that's exactly what I wanted, there we go, yeah, that's, that's pretty tight, sweet deal, um, And it looks to be like we're on target. Um, let me just we do a little three-shot group, guys. And I'm gonna go ahead and place this one on the uh, upper portion of the target, so we can have a fresh little target area. And then we'll go out, mark them out, and um, review where we stand at with our final zero. And gas block adjust, uh, blah, adjustment, gas block adjustment on this rifle. All right, guys. So now we're quite a few shots in. Um, just to recap on what I've shot so far, um, this was my very first shot. Here was my point of aim. This is my point of impact. This was my very my second shot, and my third shot. So you can say I buy the third shot. We're pretty much there. Uh, we just needed to go ahead and come down a little bit. Um, so I went ahead and adjusted. I adjusted down for uh, elevation. And then I went ahead and shot a group up here. Now, uh, this is my group number two. I went ahead and labeled that. This group is pretty tight. I, I should have a quarter in my pocket. Okay, so this is my second group. All three shots together. This was my point of aim. And this is my point of impact. Here's a quarter, guys, for reference. So if I put a quarter on there, I can cover all three shots. So I had a group the size of a quarter. Um, but again, I wasn't happy with my elevation. Uh, I'm thinking that has to do with uh, the turrets, the adjustment turrets on the scope. I don't think they're adjusting as well as I'd like them to. They might have a little bit of play in them. Um, and then I went ahead and shot a third group over here which I was adjusting the uh, gas block by then I really wasn't taking uh, I wasn't taking really good aim or I wasn't I wasn't trying to I wasn't really trying to group I was pretty much just getting a certain uh, I was aiming in a general area and I would shoot off a shot real quick uh, just so I can finalize my adjustments on the gas block but the gas block seems to be perfect uh, so we got that and then um, I shot a fourth group up here too. Also, while I was messing around with the gas block, because it, it took me quite a bit of shots, um, just because I really wanted to see that uh, the pattern that my brass was ejecting, which I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys in post as well. It seems to me like we're all finally adjusted with our, we have our, our scope finally zeroed and our gas is finally adjusted as well now i'm gonna let the rifle cool down a little bit because if you look at groups three and four which were the last two groups that i shot you can start to see that um you can start to see that uh shot group opening up and the reason why it's opening up is probably because um you start getting that barrel hot and you start losing a little bit of zero um so i'm gonna go ahead and let it cool down for a couple of minutes and we'll go ahead and shoot our final group. I went ahead and just drew a little red dot here in with my Sharpie. And this is gonna be my point of aim. Um, and we'll do one final, 
I want to try and do a five shot group for our last group and um, we'll come back with the final verdict on our zero this round five. Went ahead and let the barrel cool down and I shot my last five shot group um, this time I wanted to do five shots because sometimes uh, you, you'll have a flyer or you'll flinch at a certain shot um, usually most people want to do three or between three and five shots I like to go with five that I feel like that just gives us um, a higher number that we can reference so here are five shots I went ahead and made this red square right here that was my point of aim and you can see my point of impact one two three four and five rounds roughly about the size of a quarter guys um so i'm gonna call that zeroed at 50 yards